How's it going everybody? Darren here, aka Dr. Dev. In today's video, we will be continuing on with the Learn to Program using c -sharp.net series. Last time, we learned about the integer numeric type. Uh, we also learned about performing mathematical calculations on integer types and about some of the limitations of the integer type as well. In this video, we're going to learn about two more important numeric types, which similarly to integers have their own uses and limitations. By the end of this video, we will actually have finished off the numeric types section of this series. So to get started, I'll go ahead and open up Visual Studio, and I'm also going to open up the solution which we've been working on for this series. As you'll see, it opens up the program.cs file, where last time we were working on all of the integer stuff. Now, I'm actually going to go ahead and keep these comments here because they're still relevant to the numeric type section, but I will actually delete all of the integer stuff because that is not relevant for what we're doing today. So the first of the new numeric types that we're going to be learning about is called a double, and this is how it's spelled. And you might remember from the last time that when we tried to divide 15 by 2 using integers, that we ended up with a rounded down value of 7, even though we of course expected a 7.5. And this displayed one of the limitations of an integer in that it can only be used to represent whole integral numbers. Well, a double represents what is known as a double precision, double precision floating point number. And a floating point type is what we use when we want to represent non-integral numbers. So this means that a double, since it is a floating point type, can actually be used to store the value of 15 divided by 2 accurately. So we will get a 7.5 in a double. So let's have a look at that in action. To create a double, the keyword we use is double. Let's give it a name and let's give it a value. Now I can give it a value of 15 without specifying a decimal point. When it gets compiled, it actually, compare, it actually gets converted implicitly to a double. Or I can actually just give it a, a point zero. It all works out the exact same. So let's create another double called B and that's going to be equal to two. And a final double, which is the result of the calculation, and it's going to be A divided by B. So now we actually have an identical situation to the last time, except we're using doubles instead of integers. And of course, the last time we got a rounding value, a rounding error, because integers can only hold integral uh, numbers. So let's go ahead and print that out and see what happens this time. So I'll print out my result, start without debugging. Let it build, and there we go, we get a 7.5. So this is great, now we have a type which can be used to hold non-integral numbers. And a double can actually range from extremely tiny numbers to actually quite large numbers. But of course, similarly to the integer, the double also has its limitations. So let's take a look at that. If you remember the last time, um, when we were working with the integers, we saw from the integer type itself, that there are two constant properties called min value and max value. Well, the double is actually the exact same. It also has those properties. So if we access the double type and say dot min value, we can get to the min value and the same for max. So that's going to be double dot max value. And if we actually go ahead and print those out now, let's see what they look like. So I'll print out min and max and let's start up. So here we get for the min, it's negative 1.797693134862322. And then this E plus 308 is the scientific notation to say, well, whatever's on the left hand side of the E is the significant part of the of the of the number. So this is the significant part. And whatever is on the right hand side is the exponent as a power of 10. So to break that down, what that basically means is take this number, multiply it by 10, and then give it to the power of 308. So as you can probably imagine from that, it's a very, very, very small number that we can hold in a double. And of course, the exact same applies to the largest value available in the double, except it's positive. So we can hold a value of 1.797693134862322 multiplied by 10 to the power of 308. So, yeah, pretty crazy numbers that we can store here. So let's close that down. Um, we also have the underflow and overflow conditions with a double, except it behaves a little bit differently to how it does with integers. So with an integer, when we have an overflow condition, 
the whatever value it overflows by it just wraps it around to the bottom side of the boundary, right? So it will wrap around to the lowest number and then start adding on the additional values there. And the same for the underflow, except reversed. Well, with doubles, if you have a calculation which results in a value that exceeds those boundaries, you will actually just get a positive infinity or a negative infinity instead. So let's have a look at that. If we right line the min, uh, let's say min multiplied by i don't know let's say two and then max multiplied by two well what happens if we start now now we get minus eight and eight but of course it's not an a that's just the way the console is printing out infinity what this actually is is infinity but of course it doesn't have that character in the encoding so it prints out an eight so the final and probably most important limitation of the double type to be aware of is precision and rounding issues now, it's very similar to how decimal numbers work in math. You know, you're, you're always going to have those precision issues when you are doing calculations that are very, very precise. And a perfect example of that, if I just delete our previous code here, I can give you an example. So if I have a double, let's call this like third, and its value is equal to one uh, divided by three. So what would we expect to happen here? Well, if I print it out, we can see what we get. So let's print out one divided by three. So we get 0 0.333333, blah, 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 blah. And it goes to 15 decimal places because that's the maximum number of decimal places that a double can hold. But of course, this doesn't really accurately represent one over three, does it? This is not really the same as a third because for all of the infinite number of digits that could come on afterwards, in this case, we're saying they're all zero. And so what this means as far as we're concerned, is that floating point types, whenever you're dealing with them and doing any sort of calculations, what you are really getting as a result is actually just an approximation. So it's important to keep that in mind from a software development point of view that, you know, your result of your calculations are not gospel. They are just approximations that can be uh, accurate to a certain amount of precision, right? So up until this point, we're fairly comfortable with both the integer and the double types in how they work, what their uses are, and also how they are limited. And to be honest, when you're working with numbers in C-sharp, these two types will probably be what you end up using 90% of the time or more. But there is one last type that I think is relevant, which is actually another floating point type called a decimal, like this. And the decimal type now, it has a smaller range in its min and max values than a double, but it has much greater precision. So as you might have guessed by what I just said, yes, the decimal does indeed also have a min and max value constant property. So let's take a look at that. So if I create a decimal like this, we use the decimal keyword. I'll say decimal min equals decimal. And from the decimal type, I can access its min value like before. And then I'll create a decimal max, and that's equal to decimal dot max value. And now if we print this out, let's say we print the min here. And we will, of course, also print the max. And let's take a look at what we get for the min and max of a decimal. Oh, I accidentally printed out my, my double ignore this for now. But as you'll notice, for the decimal case, the number minus seven nine okay i'm not going to read all that that is a crazy number but you should at least see here that the range is far far smaller um, than it is on the double but let's have a look at how we can compare the precision because i did say that the decimal is more precise than a double so it, it doesn't have quite as large a range in its minimum and maximum values but it's more precise and let's see how we can prove that so actually this uh this double uh, one divided by three is actually relevant. So I think that's exactly how we'll compare it. So I'll delete my min and max decimal. And I'll also leave a comment here just to say that this is also a floating point type. Um, and let's, let's, say, let's say I create a decimal. Uh, and I'll call this one decimal third. And its value is going to be equal to 1.0m divided by 3.0m. And you're probably noticing I'm putting in an M character at the end of my number. And this is basically what we use to indicate that the decimal type should be used for our number. All right. So whenever you're working with decimals, you usually will put your, your little M character at the end of your number just to say, 
I'm using a decimal. That's what I'm expecting to use here. And if we actually go ahead and print that out now, console.write line, decimal third. So I'm printing out my double version up here, which is the third. And I'm printing out my decimal version of the exact same thing down below it. And let's see what we get. So look at that. The decimal is precise to a larger number of uh, additional decimal places. So as I said before, the double can support up to 15 decimal places of precision. And we can see here that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 additional decimal places that the decimal supports that the double doesn't. So that's 28 uh, decimal positions of precision, which is fantastic. So that actually marks the end of the video, guys. And as I said, the end of the numeric types section. So now we are fairly comfortable with integers, doubles, and decimals, which will almost certainly take up 95 plus percent of the numeric types that you'll use as a developer. So without further ado, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you liked the video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave me a like and a comment and a subscribe. Let me know what you felt. Give me any feedback, whether it's positive or negative. It will mean a lot to me. And I will see you again next time, guys. Thanks for watching.